بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله الله سبحانه وتعالى سيس في كتابه الكريم وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون I've not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. We recite this ayah and we mention this in our sermons and we talk about it often. And that is about the purpose of this creation. And especially for our youth, they need to be able to consider that the purpose of this creation is not just to play. The purpose of this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not just to, not just istimta, not just seeking pleasure to fulfill your desires. And that's why it's important for the Sunni, the Muslim woman or Muslim man that is adhering to the book in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to keep that in front of him or her. That the purpose of their being here is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That does not mean we just sit in the masjid. It does not mean we just recite the Quran without any action, but rather iman, faith in Islam, and the way we practice and actualize Tawheed is by, by a practice, by practicing and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our everyday interactions. And if we can remind ourselves often, so this is in fact just from the Baba Tadkir, I'm just reminding you, and in fact I'm reminding myself first and foremost, that we get distracted by the dunya. We get distracted by our desires. We get distracted by many things which pull us away from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realizing how we should be interacting with others. How, should we be, how we should be setting examples for others. That if you can set an example of what the divine purpose of life is, that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. If you can't practice that, then how is it we can expect from others? Because if you know that that's your purpose, then of course you're going to better yourself by seeking more knowledge to understand Tawheed, by seeking more knowledge to, of, uh, of understanding Iman, by seeking more knowledge of how to practice and actualize those principles, that Iman is a qawl al-lisan, Wa amal qalb wa amal jawarih. That iman or faith, it is a statement of the tongue. La ilaha illallah. Wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness that there's no God worthy of worship except Allah. And that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last prophet and messenger alayhi salatu wa So, by, and then the, the other aspect of iman is is the faith in the heart, the belief in, a, in the heart, the ibadat, qalbiya, you know, the, the worship that you do inside your heart, like tawakul, trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, all, of the, you know, uh, all the aspects and ways that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inwardly. Isti'ana, istighatha, you know, having hope and having fear, khushu, khashya, inaba, you know, repenting and coming back to Allah, all of that are in part Amur Qalbiya, their worship that is taking place in the heart. And then the last part of faith, as we mentioned, Al Amal Bi Jawarih, that you're doing deeds and actions of worship Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the limbs. That means you're praying to Allah, you're supplicating to Allah, you're asking and seeking from Allah. You're making the Hajj, bi'idnillah, for Allah, Umrah, Umrah, 
for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Giving da'wah, saying a beautiful word, smiling for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inviting people to the haq. وَتَوَصَلْ haq, Calling to the truth. All of this is a part of Iman. All of this is a part of actualizing our Tawheed. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our many, many, many sins and mukhalifat, many mistakes we make, many things we say, many things we do. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.